Good evening and welcome to BBC London with me, Frankie McCamley. A 16-year-old boy has been arrested on suspicion of arson after a fire at the London Oratory School in Fulham. It took nearly two hours to get the fire under control. A nearby shopping centre and a number of homes were evacuated. No one is believed to have been injured. Due to the severity of the fire, we made it 10 fire engines. That's 100 firefighters and we got the fire under control at 11.47. The fire investigation with the London Fire Brigade's Fire Investigation Unit and the Metropolitan Police could possibly go on for days, if not weeks. It's now six and a half years since the Grenfell Tower tragedy exposed the fire safety risks lurking in many buildings. As a result, many introduced round-the-clock patrols known as waking watches, and nearly 200 residential blocks in London still have them. But residents are telling us it's become a financial nightmare. Guy Lynn reports. For the last three years, James feels that he's been living in a construction site. The reason? potentially dangerous cladding which needs to be removed and replaced post the Grenfell fire. It has been an absolute nightmare um, living here. Um, the scaffolding, the noise, the disruption constantly, um, it's an ongoing nightmare. But if it wasn't bad enough being surrounded by a construction site, as current fire safety measures are severely inadequate, James and more than 440 other apartments have to pay thousands of pounds a year for what's called a waking watch, or constant patrols, similar to here in another building. Workers patrol and then warn residents if there's a fire. But James says it's just all proving too expensive. We're all struggling due to the increase in the service charge costs. Um, it is a challenge every day trying to work out how we're going to pay all of that money and keep on top of it. Um, and it's going up and up. And for you personally? And for me personally, yeah, struggling like everybody else um, to, to cover all of those costs on top of everything else. Our increased ground rent, increased service charge, everything's going up. This festive season, more than 180 buildings in the capital still have waking watches. Galleons Approach Management Limited told BBC London the watches on James's estate were, as London Fire Brigade said, they were essential. They will be discontinued next September and the staff on the watches are paid minimum wage. Six and a half years on from Grenfell, the daily impact still very much being felt for those like James. Guy Lynn, BBC London. Now, we may have all had one too many mince pies over the last few days, but this is one way to work them off. A hub has opened its doors in South London, offering health checks and exercise classes. It's all run by Age UK's team in Croydon, and Emma North went to visit. We are going to do four more. One. If the post-Christmas sofa three, slump still has four. you gripped, let this be a lesson to you. If I'm using all the joints, then I'm not right. stiffening up. And of course, when you get in, well, into your 80s, 88, you know, so, so uh, you like to keep going, like to keep moving. Bounce into that stretch. If you sit at home, you do it alone, you don't enjoy it that much. So if I come out here with my friend and enjoy the exercise with everyone around us. Well, I am more active. I am more pleasant. <laughs> yes. Age UK in Croydon offers a workout, a health check and a strong sense of community. Here, a healthy body really does equal a healthy mind. They come out of their shell a lot more, they're not as reserved, they can have a conversation with lots of different people and the confidence as well. I think when you introduce an exercise, they might be like, oh, I can't do that. A couple of weeks later, they're smashing out ten of them. Plus, there's a more serious, strategic element to safeguarding London's future. As London's population grows, so does the number of older citizens. And it's estimated that by 2035, there could be as many 2 million Londoners who are aged 60 or over. In fact, there could be more aged over 60 than there are under 16s. So, as our population ages, the city needs to make sure that its citizens are active. People are connected through public transport, people need to walk around for uh, any kind of shopping. As people age, they get more isolated because people are so busy in their lives, they forget that older people are also people. So with a fitter, more active older population expected to play a bigger part in the capital society and economy, keeping mobile and keeping connected is essential. 
as is that post-workout mince pie. Emma North, BBC London. Next, it's one of London's legendary music venues, with Amy Winehouse and Adele among those who've performed there. But Union Chapel in Islington has an issue. The organ, which is more than 140 years old, needs urgent repairs. So they're calling on music lovers to help. This organ is extremely special and unique. It was built by one of the master organ builders of its time in 1877, it's also one of very few left now with water hydraulic power. I'm Claire Emsinger and I'm a composer and performer and also a music director of the organ at Union Chapel. I have built a programme around the organ in education and performance. So we offer free workshops and lessons to people of all ages to get them involved in the instrument. The problem with our organ is, is that we currently have a crack in the swell section. The air is not only going through the pipes, but also escaping throughout that crack, making the keyboard unplayable. So this is the water hydraulics down here, which we use as an alternative to the electric blowing system. We're now faced with the big problem of raising 130,000 for a provisional date in January to take that swell soundboard out to our organ builders to be fully restored. I'm now reaching out to the public to ask if anyone who loves Union Chapel or loves the organ and wants to help, please, please do. Well, time for a look at the weather. Here's Stav. Hi there, good evening to you. Well, Storm Garrett brought some disruption up and down the country. Not too bad for our region. It was windy with outbreaks of rain and stays blustery through tonight as well. But tomorrow will remain windy, not as windy as today, and we'll see sunshine and showers. So we start off with uh, quite a bit of sunshine around. A few passing showers. It will remain blustery. Winds coming in from the southwest. And later in the day, we could see some heavier showers merging to together to produce some longer spells of rain. Temperatures 12 or 13 degrees. That is above the seasonal norm, but it might not feel like that because of the strength of the wind. It does stay unsettled, though, for the end of the week and in the run-up to New Year's Eve with another spell of wet and windy weather at times. It will be turning cooler as we head into next week. Take care. Well, that's all from us for now. There's more on our website, including how London is bucking the trend when it comes to the Boxing Day sales. I'll be back around 20 past 10 tonight. Until then, have yourself a lovely evening. Bye.